Hi, this is Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies and welcome to this, the fourth uh, video in the instructional series on the Mentor EM, Eddy Current Instrument. This time we're going to take a closer look at how we use gestures to interact with the Mentor instrument. And to help us with this, I've made a very simple app called Impede and Strip. I'll run that. Launch. And we haven't done anything with instruction in this app. It's just very simple, straightforward. Uh, one panel. We have a Lissajou display, also known as a, as a spot view or uh, impedance plane view on the top. And on the bottom of the screen, we have a strip chart. So the two basic views. Uh, the top view is impedance plane, inductance, and resistance. Uh, the bottom view is amplitude of one axis of that over time. So you notice if I clear it, I get a trace that draws in from left to right. And as I run the probe over, the, over a notch in a part, I get a series of indications. And if I hit the freeze button, I stop acquiring new data. My strip chart stops flowing. And I've essentially recorded what happened for the last several seconds. If you come into the strip chart and you look at the display on a strip chart, uh, the top parameter is called scan time, and that's how many seconds are displayed on a strip chart. Um, you can set that to anything from uh, just a little over zero to about 30 seconds. Uh, the next item that you can choose for display of this trip chart is are you interested in looking at the Y component of the Lissajou or the X component? Uh, so you can choose which axis of indication uh, is going to best show you what you want to see here. Fill direction, forward is the direction you saw. It starts from left to right. When it hits the right hand edge, the whole thing starts to scroll to the left. Uh, reverse is going to do just the opposite. It will start scrolling in from the, the right, hit the left edge, scroll that direction. Uh, you can choose to uh, how you want to view. Uh, if you turn it, say, point, uh, with sample rate set high enough, it will be almost indistinguishable from line. Uh, point view is giving you individual points on uh, of impedance information or amplitude information in this case. Uh, line, we connect the dots together with a line and it gives you one smooth display. Uh, curve uh, attempts to do a several point spline fit with a continuous curve. Um, has a little bit the same effect as just a touch of low pass filtering. Uh, for the most part you'll leave that in line mode. You can make the line wider. If it's a little bit hard to see in your lighting conditions at uh, one pixel wide, you can draw it several pixels wide. Mostly you'll leave that at one. And you can choose your grid color. Uh, on the Eddy Current menu, you have channel selection. In this case, we're only running one channel. Uh, the frequency that we're inducing into the probe carrier frequency, gain, phase. Uh, drive voltage is how much signal the generator of the instrument is putting through the coils of the probe. Uh, receiver gain, uh, one thing that causes a lot of confusion in newcomers to the mentor instrument over some other uh, eddy current instruments is they expect the amplitude of the signal to change when they change receiver gain. Uh, that will not happen in the mentor. This control is only used to keep, to avoid from saturating the amplifiers on the input of the instrument. Um, if you are getting uh, a sharp uh, knee in your liftoff signal or some other indication that you're saturating amplifiers or saturating the coils, try reducing your receiver gain. Um, in general, you will not see a change in amplitude of the signal as a result of that. Um, and that's good. That's the instrument behaving as, as intended. Uh, filters, uh, you have a choice of off or bandpass filter, and then you have the high pass and low pass settings for that. Bridge mode, 
uh, goes to how we're driving, how we set up the instrument, its generators and amplifiers with the Wheatstone bridge on the front end of the instrument to interface to the probes. And the rotary offset we're not going to use in this application, that's only used with the rotary drive. So let's go back, we'll clear our signal, we'll put our probe down on the standard, we'll balance, run across a series of notches, there's a half millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter notches, and we'll freeze. Now. Once we've acquired signal and frozen, we have a number of options that we can use to play back parts of that signal that interest us and further make adjustments to the instrument. So one of the things we can do, if you'll notice down in the lower right corner of the strip chart, there's a little button with a, an arrow. If I press that arrow, the strip chart kind of breaks into two. The lower part of the strip chart is what we call the overview. And that will always show us everything that was in the data buffer that we recorded. So we recorded 10 seconds of inspection, and we're always going to see the full 10 seconds down in the bottom. Now you notice I put my finger down, touched, dragged, and lifted, and I put two vertical cursors on the overview with a, a blue box in between. Now, everything that's inside that box has now been stretched to show in the top part of the strip chart, and it's also showing on the list issue at the same time. And if we have multiple channels set up here with, say, two or three list issues showing different time slices or different frequencies and a more complex setup, everything would still be synchronized by these cursors on the strip chart. So again, that's, I put my finger down, that starts a cursor, I drag my finger, the cursor gets wider or narrower, I lift up. Now my cursors are in place. At this point, I can take my finger, go to the, the top part of the, the strip chart. If I put my finger down there and swipe it from side to side, you'll notice my cursor box moves together. So one finger touch, move to side to side, I can center that trace. If I take two fingers and do a pinch movement, I zoom in, all right? So I'm stretching what I'm seeing in this window, so I see less of the signal. So as I stretch up here, my cursors move closer together. I'm zooming in in time and looking at part of the signal. If I do the two finger pinch together, it spreads the cursors apart. I can always come back and put my finger on the cursor, move a cursor individually. If I put my finger between the cursors on the blue box, I can move it side to side. I can come up here to the top and move side to side and you'll notice the cursors are moving opposite the direction that I'm dragging the trace. And that's the, the proper response. Now, on the list issue, one of the things I notice is, well, gee, my signal's out here at uh, about 35, 40 degrees, but I would really like that signal to be oriented vertically. So I can take two fingers, put them down on the list issue, and twist and I can rotate the phase angle of the display simply by putting two fingers down and twisting. If I put two fingers down and pinch together without twisting, it reduces the gain. Two fingers down and spread the fingers apart, and I've increased the gain. If I want to, if I know my signal of interest is always going to rise away from the origin, Rather than wasting half of this display, I can put my finger on the origin and drag it anywhere within the list issue that's convenient to me. And then again, I can increase my gain so I have even more sensitivity with which to view my signal. Coming back to the strip chart, if I want to extend that back to all of the signal, all of the 10 seconds, if I tap twice in the main part of the view, 
it discards my cursors and now I see the entire area again. Now one thing that's, uh, that sometimes you would want to do is see your entire buffer overlaid at one time on the, the list as you. If you just take your fingers and just stretch the main view a little bit, now that puts your cursors just about at the ends of the overview and you see all of the indications overlaid together on the main screen, on the main list as you. So again, double tap to get rid of the the uh, cursors. You can close the overview and just look at your strip chart. When you're in this mode, again, the pinch gesture will put cursors down very close to the ends, but now I can continue to stretch that out, swipe side to side, center up an interesting indication, look at it, okay I've evaluated that, double tap, there you are, I'm back to normal. I can clear that by hitting the clear button, I can turn freeze off, and now I can come in and inspect live. I've got it all set up so that my one millimeter deep notch and my standard gives me just about 100% screen height indication. So if I clear it, and I go clean metal, half millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeters. Okay. So that's the, the basics of interacting with the Mentor EM with gestures. Uh, those gestures are generally available on any app uh, that includes these views. Uh, sometimes the application author may choose to lock gestures on the the uh, on specific data views to avoid accidentally moving something. If your hand brushed the screen, you might accidentally adjust gain or phase. So you can lock that. You can also lock the entire touch screen with this little button down in the lower right hand corner uh, you see a, a finger uh, icon like so if you touch that you notice now I have an X through the hand now it doesn't matter what I do here nothing is going to respond on the touch screen except that icon to unlock it again so if your instrument ever stops responding and you wonder why Check down here and make sure that you haven't accidentally locked the touch screen. However, once you've gone through your process of calibrating for a specific test and you're, say, up on the wing of an aircraft inspecting a rivet line, you might want to think about locking your display, locking your touch screen, so that you don't accidentally change something about your setup in the middle of the inspection. So. With that, thank you for joining me. Again, this is Dan Groninger from GE Inspection Technologies, and I hope you've enjoyed this video on The Mentor.